Making perfectly straight and parallel cuts with a standard circular saw can be a little bit tricky, but in this video I'm going to show you four ways to make this easier. One option is to use a straight edge guide like this one. There are a couple different varieties of straight edge guides out there and they all clamp against the boards one way or another. What's nice about this kind of guide is that it can be put almost anywhere on the board as long as you have two parallel edges. And that's the major drawback of this kind of guide, you're going to have trouble clamping it in place if both edges aren't parallel. So what I'm going to do is measure from this edge in at both the front and back of my cut. Here all I'm doing is I'm lining up this surface with my marks on the board. It's a little bit fiddly because sometimes as you clamp these down, they will move just a little bit on you. So let's make a test cut and see how close to parallel this is. Let's take a look at how accurate this cut came out after using the clamping guide. This edge is nice and straight. I can verify that by just setting it against the clamping guide and looking at it. If I measure both ends, here on this end, we're just under two inches, and this end is pretty close, but it's just a touch skinnier. So it's close to parallel, but not dead on the money. That really comes down to how much time you spend setting up your clamping guide each and every time you need to make a cut. Another option that's pretty inexpensive is clamping a straight edge to your board. You could use something like a four foot level or maybe a long scrap of plywood. Heck, if you're lucky, you could even use a two by four. The trick would just be finding one that's straight first. The upside of this approach is that it's cheap and you can clamp the straight edge just about anywhere on the board to make parallel or angled cuts. But the downside is that there's more margin for error, especially when you're setting up to make parallel cuts. And this method can be a bit more cumbersome because you're always having to grab clamps and make sure that your straight edge doesn't slip out of position before you're ready to make a cut. So we just made a cut using the straight edge. So let's take a look and see the results. So here again, just using the straight edge as my reference, I can see the cut looks pretty good. It looks pretty straight. So let's see how close to parallel it is. So right here it is right on two inches, and right here it is a bit under two inches. So it is not as close to parallel as the straight edge clamping guide was, but just depending on the level of accuracy you need for your project, it might get the job done for you. The third common approach is to freehand your cuts. This approach is pretty fast to set up, and it definitely has its place. But since you're freehanding a cut, instead of using a guide of some kind, the edges just aren't going to be as crisp. Think of this more for construction applications, and not so much your cabinetry or fine woodworking applications. That said, here are a couple of tips that can help you to make freehand cuts a lot better. First off, clearly mark your line so that you can see it easily while you're making the cut. Secondly, sight at the blade instead of the indentations on the front or back of your saw. And the third thing sounds pretty easy and it is, just don't rush the cut. Take your time, make sure you follow the line, and you'll actually make straighter cuts than you probably thought you could. So you're probably expecting this, but let's just see how straight this edge is. Yeah, when I put it against the level, you can really see how inconsistent that edge is. It's, it's relatively straight, but let's just see how close to parallel we are. Here at one end, we're at two and three sixteenths, and here at the other end, yeah, I mean, we're just under two and three sixteenths. So uh, not that bad in terms of being parallel, and especially for it being a freehand cut. So those first three methods will absolutely get the job done, but there is a better way to get straight and parallel cuts from your circular saw, and that's to use what's called a rip guide. The one I'm going to take a look at today is the Bora NGX rip guide. Now Bora sent this one to me to test out, so let's get it set up and make some cuts. This rip guide can be set up for left-handed or right-handed users, and the mounting plate allows you to use circular saws that have the blade on the right-hand side or the left-hand side of the tool. So let's say that you're left-handed. You're gonna hold the guide with your right hand, and you'll set up the plate here, so that way you're using the saw with your left hand. But if you're right-handed, like I am, you'll have this flipped over. So you'll have your left hand here on the guide, and then you'll have the saw plate here. Now, if you have to cut on the right-hand side of a sheet or the left-hand side of a sheet, you can switch this thing around to meet that application. So let me show you real quick how the mounting plate gets put onto the guide. Before we put the mounting plate 
on these guide rails. We want to make sure that this tab is flipped over so that way this wheel is unlocked. Then we're just going to take the plate and slide it on to the end of the guide rail. If this mounting plate binds as you're getting it started on these two guide rails, you can flip it back over, loosen these four bolts until this plate guides smoothly along the length of travel. I'm going to do that real quick. There, that's a lot better. Today I'm gonna to be using a cordless circular saw. So first I'm gonna take the battery out so that way I don't cut my hands on accident. To get this mounted to the guide, what I'm going to do first is move this over so that the plate can be sitting flat on the surface. I just simply lift up the blade guard and line up this edge of the saw's base with this edge of the guide. And I'm gonna push it all the way forward until it hits against this rubber stop here in the front. And then I pull this clamp up at the back and lock it in place. Both of the guide rods have a scale on them. And all you have to do is line up the tick mark with whatever dimension you need to then make your cut. With the way the saw is set up currently, I'm going to be using this tick mark as my reference. And to dial in a dimension, all I do is turn this knob. And once I get to the right spot, I just flip this lever over and lock it down. And now the guide plate is locked in place and I'm ready to make a cut. Let's see how straight and parallel this cut came out off of the rip guide. That is definitely very straight, very consistent. So let's look at how close to parallel it is. On this end, we are just inside of seven inches and down here, it's exactly the same. So definitely got a really good parallel cut using the rip guide on this piece. As you see, the NGX rip guide from Bora makes it pretty easy to get straight parallel rips with your circular saw. If this video was helpful for you, let me know what the biggest takeaway was in the comments below. And if you wanna see more tool reviews, you can check out this playlist right here. If you wanna see more woodworking projects, you can check out that playlist down there. Until next time, let the sawdust fly in, have fun making something.